By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match between Atok Power, that's a deck that Peckham uh, brought to the table a brand new patron. Welcome to the show, Peckham. And he is taking on my Orbi Tron deck. So I'm playing uh, red and white and, of course, with the Tron Lance. You've seen this deck on the channel a few times. I've made some tweaks to it, and I would love to hear your feedback, but more about that in the deck deck section. And before I jump into that deck deck section, I would like to point out that, as always, if you want to go straight to the games, I know some of you enjoy going to the games and check out the deck decks after. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because as always, I've added some chapters there and one of the chapters reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the games. And now I'm going to continue with the deck deck. I'm actually going to start with the deck of my opponent, Peckham. Let's take a look at his deck, Atok Power. And here you see the deck of Peckham. So this is Atok Power. And the first thing you probably notice is the fact that we see four strips in here. There was a little bit of a miscommunication. Uh, Peckham just got back into old school. And you see this often. I can relate to that, Peckham. Uh, you started playing in 94, 95. And you just played Magic, you know? It wasn't like, what rule set are you playing? And now, in these modern old school days, obviously, there are a lot of different rule sets. One rule you can play with Mana Burn. One you can play without. And that can be quite overwhelming when you're starting, you know, when you're coming back in old school, I should say. So anyway, doesn't matter much. Well, it matters a little bit for the game, but I just want to point that out. It was just a simple miscommunication. So we do see four strip mines here in the deck. If we look at the rest of the deck, it's really like five color good stuff with Atox, right? Because we see a lot of the cards that are good in any deck, the famous restricted cards, Will of Fortune, Demonic Tutor, the Blue Power. We see all the mocks and we see the Black Lotus. So this is really like powerhouse deck right and then we see some other cards that i find quite interesting uh for example he's playing only with two atox and not with four atox so i would have kind of expected him to be on four atox um and also when we look at his the rest of his creature base we see four suchis and two juggernauts we don't see any triskelions um maybe i would have put some trikes in here to be honest um, and then wh when I'm looking at the deck, I, I noticed the two Howling Minds. I think it's super cool you're working, you're playing with Howling Minds. I think the idea with the Howling Mind is probably that you're afraid of running out of steam. I mean, this deck can go really fast. You play out your Mox and you play out maybe even the Mana Vaults. And then you start casting your big artifact creatures, you know, your Juggernaut, your Suchi. And you start attacking with them and the game could be over quite quickly. But also your hand could be empty quite quickly. And then the Howling Minds can help you kind of get some new fuel and play that out. I think when I'm looking at this deck, I would probably kind of balance out the amount of uh, of ramp in the deck. I'm not sure if I would play with three mana vaults, although the mana vaults, of course, work great with Atok. Perhaps in this deck, I would go with four Atox and maybe tone down a little bit on the white control cards. We see, of course, the three swords and the four disenchants, super good cards. But this deck seems to be balancing on two different thoughts like one side of the deck wants the game to be over with really quickly you know ramp up play out big creatures play out atok play out burn in the form of the fireballs and the, and the lightning bolts get the game over quick and the other side of the deck is a bit more controlling with the swords to plow series with the jam day tome you know maybe playing a late fireball to win the game that's not necessarily a bad thing you basically have two plants which is good but I wonder if there's enough focus on either one of the plants, if you know what I mean. I would definitely consider adding trikes to this and maybe take out the mana vaults or play with the mana vault less. Do you really need white in this? I'm not sure. Obviously, disenchant and swords are great cards, don't get me wrong, but yeah, those are just my wonderings looking at your list. I do think it's quite a strong list. It's also really cool, Peckham, to see your collection of cards. That's quite impressive that you've had all those. That's fantastic. That's a good... Good way to start old school magic. Anyway, this is the deck of Peckham. There's no sideboard in this match, by the way, because Peckham didn't have a sideboard yet. Now let's take a look at my deck, Orbitron. And here we see my Orbitron deck. So this is deck is just always a work in progress, right? I want to make Tron work and preferably I want to do it with red and white. So I've made some recent changes that I want to share with you. So first off, the thing with Tron is that if Tron is not online, you still want to be able to kind of do something in the game. So what I've done is I've decided to play with Howling Mine, Winter Orb, and of course the Relic Barrier combo, right? If you tap down the Winter Orb, you can shut the Winter Orb down. You can do the same with Howling Mine, meaning you can create a situation where I get to untap all my lands. My opponent only gets to untap one land. 
and I can create a situation with the Howling Mind where I can draw two cards and my opponent only gets to draw one card because I tap my Howling Mind with the Relic Barrier to shut it off. Now that's kind of the ideal scenario. The cool thing of this battle plan is that all these artifacts only cost two mana to cast. So even if I don't have Tron, it's really easy for me to cast it. And of course, when I have Howling Mind and Relic Barrier on the battlefield, I draw more cards than my opponent and I'll probably draw into my Tron. So when I have Tron, what I wanna do is hopefully play out an early trike, you know, maybe turn four or even a turn three trike. Could be possible if all the stars are aligned. Hardly ever happens, but when it does, it's pretty cool. And of course, I've got the trick in this deck with Taunus's Coffin and Triskelion, where I can put the trike into the coffin and then I can release it from the coffin again. And when it comes into play, the enter the battlefield triggers trigger again. So that means that Triskelion gets an additional three counters. So you can make this super big robot that can deal tons of damage to my opponent. That's something that hardly ever works. But when it does, it is super cool and it gives you this warm, fuzzy feeling inside, which I love. I love to do stuff like that, even though most games it doesn't work. Then, of course, I'm playing with my Suchis because it's a 4 4 4 4, so that's pretty good. The problem of Suchi and Trike is that they're also artifacts, and in this format, everybody plays with artifact hate. So, despite the fact that a 4 4 4 4 without a drawback, because we're, we're playing Swedish rules, so no mana burn. Uh, is insanely strong, I agree, but don't underestimate all the artifact hate. I've played with Suchi for a long time. When it hits the board, it's usually dead in no time. And, and you can also use a Psionic Blast to it. And, you know, it, it doesn't fly, so you can block it with an Urnum. An Urnum is another really popular card in the format that you see in a lot of games. So Suchi, yes, it's good, but not that good, you know. Um, then when we're looking at the colored cards, we have only three red cards in the deck, but both or all three cards, I should say, uh, are really, really good. We've got an Atok in here as well, so one red and one. That Atok is relatively new in the deck. I think Atok is really good. Also, for example, when I play a Winter Orb after my opponent has tapped out, and then the opponent can only untap one land, right? But when that Winter Orb starts working against me, I can just eat it with the Atok, and I get to untap everything. The same thing could be said for a Howling Mine. You know, maybe I have a Howling Mine and a Relic Barrier, and my opponent disenchants the Relic Barrier, in response, I could eat up my own Howling Mind, making sure that my opponent doesn't get the double cards. Besides that, an Atok in a deck with this many artifacts is always strong, right? It's going to be really difficult for my opponent to deal with. Um, then, of course, I'm playing with Disintegrate and Fireball. Both of these cards can be, you know, can be game finishers when I've got Tron and I've got enough mana. So, usually with this deck, I win with a big Fireball or a big Disintegrate after already having dealt some damage with my robots. Uh, then when we look at the white section of the deck, we actually have 10 white cards, which is quite a lot. We have three Disenchants, four Swords to Plowshares, and a Balance. I think Balance works really good in this deck because there are so many non-creature artifacts and Balance doesn't count them. So, I can just empty my, my artifacts from my hand and then play a balance. You know, that's just an ideal scenario that has happened quite a lot. So hopefully it's going to happen again in this matchup. And then we're playing with a new card in this deck, Kismet. So Kismet, one white and three for this enchantment from Legends that says lands, creatures, and artifacts come into play tap. Now, especially the lands are quite important here because I'm playing with Winter Orb. So my opponent only gets to untap one land during his untap step. And then also the lands that he plays out their turn come into play tap, which is just ideal with the Winter Orb. So I'm really hoping to kind of improve my Winter Orb soft lock with the Kismet. I've taken out my two City in a Bottles to make space for the Kismet. So City in a Bottle is now in my sideboard. If we look at the rest of my sideboard, I'm also playing with three Blood Moons, which is very tricky in my deck. Because remember, if I start playing a Blood Moon, I'm canceling out all my white cards. So when I board in my Blood Moon, I really need to think what kind of deck am I playing against and what other cards from my sideboard am I going to put in and, you know, to take out most of my white cards when I'm deciding to board in the Blood Moon. So that's something, you, you know, with these decks, and, and this is a deck that I've played with quite a lot, the more you play with this deck and the more you tweak with the deck, obviously the better you get at it. And you just need to take it to a lot of tournaments. You need to take it to a lot of kitchen table sessions. You need to accept that you're going to lose a lot of games. But every time you get better with the deck, and you get to improve your pet deck. And I find that just very, very rewarding. Anyway, this is my deck. We looked at the deck of Peckham. So um, let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. So it's me, Timmy, playing Orbitron against Peckham, who's on Atok Power. So a five color Atok deck where he plays all the Moxen and basically all the power, I believe. Also Black Lotus in there. And Peckham, you're starting with a Howling Mine on turn one. That is really sweet, Peckham. I like your style. He's playing two Howling Mines main in his deck. 
And I'm also playing with Howling Mind, so we can expect a lot of card draw. But now I'm on nine cards. I'm already in the tank here, trying to decide what to do. I'm probably forced to discard here. Play out a land. There's a plateau for turn. I don't have a lot of things I can do with just one mana. I got a Soul Ring and some Mox, and that's about it. Discarding my Howling Mind here, passing the turn. So seven in hand. Four in hand for Peckham. He's going to go up back to uh, six because of his own Howling Mind. I mean, that's a really good start for Peckham here. And I think we see a Mishra's Factory in hand. So he's playing out the Factory. And this usually happens, by the way, because I believe, Peckham, this was your first game online with the webcam that you said. You sometimes forget that you're showing the cards we were talking about. They're like, keep the cards close. He's got five in hand, played out that Mishra's Factory pass the turn and playing out a Power Plant. And there's a Relic Barrier. I think Relic Barrier can be really good against, uh, against a deck of Peckham. And now it's going to be interesting to see what I'm going to do. I've got quite a lot of options. I could tap down the Mox Pearl. I could tap down the Howling Mine because then Peckham only draws one card, but I also only get to draw one card. I can do these things during the upkeep, or I can also keep the Relic Barrier untapped to tap down the Mishra's Factory if he decides to animate it. I think I'm tapping down, yeah, I'm tapping down a Howling Mine here. I think that's a good decision. So Peckham only gets to draw one card instead of two. I think Relic Barrier could be pretty important in this match. Let's see what Peckham can do. Animating the Factory, attacking. It's kind of a free attack because I'm tapped out, so I cannot play a Disenchant or a Bolt or anything. Putting me on 18 here. We haven't seen a land drop yet. So he's missing a land drop. Interesting information. So that's kind of information for me that motivates me to keep tapping down his Howling Mine. Playing a tower now. So all I need is a mine and I've got Tron. That would be awesome. Tapping two. What am I going to do? Ooh, play my own Howling Mine. Tapping it down with the Relic Barrier. So this is that combo in the deck, right? When I tap down Howling Mine, it means it doesn't work anymore. You shut it off. So Peckham only gets to draw one card. Well, actually two cards because he also has a Howling Mine. But next turn, I get to draw three cards. That is super cool. It's like an Ancestral Recall turn. That's really sweet. Anyway, let's look at what Peckham can do. Play a City of Brass here. A Mox Ruby. Ooh, so I guess he found these two cards from the top. What can he do? He's in the tank here. He's got a lot of options. Six cards in hand. I also have six in hand. That's the nice thing about these Howling Mind games that you have a lot of cards, probably a lot of interaction as well. Tapping a City of Brass, taking a damage, dropping to 19. He's going to tap the Ruby here as well. What is he going to do with the mana? Ooh, there's a Time Walk. This is great for him. The Time Walk is so good, also because of that active Howling Mind, so he gets to draw four cards, right? Anyway, attacking first with the Factory, there is a Swords to Plowshares, getting rid of the uh, Mishra's Factory, but two life, of course, for Peckham, going back up to 20. There's a Bolt here on my life total, dropping here to 15. And of course, now he gets to take his extra turn, drawing two because of his Howling Mind. And it's looking quite good here for Peckham. I wonder if he's able to play like a Juggernaut or Suchi this turn to add some more pressure to the board. Of course, his problem is that as soon as I untap, I do get to draw three cards because of the double Howling Mine. There is a uh, Strip Mine on the side of Peckham, so he's got five mana now. I wonder if he's going to use the Strip, and then on what is he going to use the Strip? I mean, he's got a lot of good targets. Looks like he's going to use the strip for mana, though, playing out a Juggernaut. So a 5-3 that has to attack each turn if able. And we also see a Mox Sapphire. Five cards in hand for me. He's going to tap the Mox here and the City of Brass. There's an Atok. Ooh, it's looking really good for Peckham. I need to find some answers. A balance would be quite good here. It would take care of both creatures. Let's see what I can do. 
I believe I got eight cards in hand right now. I'm drawing three because of the double howling mine. The question is, do I have the luxury to use the Relic Barrier again on my own Howling Mine? Or do I feel like I need to keep it untapped to tap down the Juggernaut? That's the question. Playing a Plateau first, let's see what I can do here. Seven in hand, it seems. And I'm just passing the turn here. Okay, that's interesting. Probably means that I've got like disenchants in hand or swords like instants that I can use and I'm probably going to use the relic barrier here on the juggernaut So I'm going to allow Peckham here to draw three cards I think you only drew two there Peckham or did you get three? There's an ancestral recall even more cards here for Peckham Wow and here you can really see the blue power doing its work, right? We saw the time walk, which is really good for him. And now the ancestral recall. So despite the fact that I have that advantage with relic barrier and howling mine, um, you know, it's not working that great for me because of the blue power here on the side of Peckham. Anyway, he's drawing an extra three cards. No idea how many cards he's got in hand now. It must be a zillion. Let's see what he can do. I mean, that Atog is looking super scary. I hope I have a sword to plow shares in hand here. I mean, he's got three mocks and defeat to the Atok if he wants to. So he's first going to attack. That makes sense. So I'm going to tap down the Juggernaut. Looks like he's not attacking, though, with the Atok. That's a little bit surprising. Or maybe he's still in his declaring combat step. That could be the case, of course. And I'm just tapping it now in his main face. Because it looks like, I mean, I would attack, with, yeah, why wouldn't you attack with the Atok? I mean, maybe you don't want to sack anything, but you can always do that, so. Probably, yeah, going to take a damage, you're going to go to 14. The thing is, if he sacks artifacts in response, I can always play out the, um, the swords. So there's no need to rush. I mean, if he just keeps it at one damage, I'm fine with that. And now he plays a Suchi. Then in my end step, there's the swords probably on the Atok. And he's going to eat the Sapphire, so he's going to gain three life points. So he's going to go up to 22, I believe. Yeah, so he's up to 22. He's got the Suchi on the board and the Juggernaut and passing the turn. The good news for me, though, is that, again, I'm drawing three cards. I mean, at a certain point, I have to find some answers and be able to stabilize. I mean, I'm still on 14, which is not too bad. A second Relic Barrier would be really sweet. Maybe a mine to get... Okay, yeah, this is good as well. Library of Alexandria, because I believe I've got seven in hand, so I've got an active library. There's a Soul Ring. Yeah, now I've got seven in hand, it seems. So now I'm activating the Loa, drawing an extra card, going back up to eight. Maybe I can find my own Suchi. That would be quite nice as well. I can block Suchi on Suchi. Tapping four here. Okay, could be a Suchi. Oh, an Icy Manipulator. That's also good. I still have the one mana open to use it. And now the question is, am I going to use it on his creatures and allowing Peckham here to draw three more cards? So seven cards in hand. So many cards this game. And I'm allowing Peckham also to draw three cards here. That's just insane. So he's got nine cards in hand at the moment. And that's what you get, of course, when both players are playing Howling Mines. And we're, we're both, we're not playing with Vices, so that's kind of funny. You would expect a Vice in, in one of these two decks, actually, but it's, it's not in there. Maybe I should play some Vices in my sideboard. I think I should, actually. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Let's first see here what Peckham's going to do. So he's going to strip away my Library of Alexandria. That makes perfect sense. And uh, he's going to attack here. So I'm going to tap down both of his uh, creatures here with the Icy Manipulator and the Relic Barrier. Five mana for Peckin. 
Let's see what he can do. I'm expecting like more creatures, maybe an Atok. Okay, there's a Mana Vault. Tapping the Vault. Ooh, what is he going to do here? Playing another Suchi. So he wants to keep that mana open. Passing the turn. So now I'm going to draw three cards. Going to go up to ten cards in hand. That's insane. What can I do with the ten cards? There is a lot of pressure on the board, though, with the two Suchis and the Juggernaut. And look at that. I found Tron. I'm going to play another Relic Barrier. That is really good. Play out a Mox Ruby. Tapping the Tower. Tapping the Ruby. There's a Suchi. So putting some pressure on, I mean, Peckham's still on 22, haven't dealt any damage to him yet. I'm really taking my time, which makes sense because remember, I mean, I've started to turn with 10 cards in hand. There's just a lot of thought going into this turn. What am I going to play out here? There's a Kismet. So that's going to slow my opponent down a little bit. And I've got one mana floating, it seems, using that one mana to tap down my own Howling Mine with my Icy Manipulator. I wonder if I'm going to tap down the Howling Mine of Peckham here. Five cards in hand. I've done so much this turn. Insane. And passing the turn here over to Peckham, probably. Exactly. So now it's his turn. What is he going to do? So he can choose to untap. He's going to take a damage from his own vault. Doesn't matter much because he's still on 21 after the damage. He's going to draw two cards. So I'm not tapping down the Howling Mine. I, um, I think maybe I should have tapped down the Howling Mine. Doesn't mean I take some damage, but... Now he's playing a Strip Mine. Comes into play tap because of the Kismet. I wonder what he can do. I mean, if he's going to attack, I'm going to tap down two of his creatures, block one with the Suchi, probably make a trade. Probably going to trade Suchi for Suchi. Let's see what he's going to do. He's got five mana. Six cards in hand, I believe. Tapping down a plateau. Are we going to see? Yeah, swords. Oh, there I can see some cards in that. Peckham. But that's a swords. Yeah, that's a good move. Going to gain four life, but I'm going to lose them. Going to go up to 18. I'm going to tap down two of his creatures, probably. Yeah, Juggernaut and Suchi going to take four from the Suchi. Going to drop back to 14. Yeah, this was really a good Swords to Plowshares from Peckham. If he can also find some disenchants to get rid of some of those Relic Barriers and ICs, that would be great for him. He's going to tap four, going to take another damage. There's another Juggernaut. So both Juggernauts in his deck are now on the table. And I'm pointing out the Kismet that the Juggernaut comes into play tap. Doesn't matter much though, but still. Drawing three cards. I mean, I love drawing all these cards, but I mean, Peckham still seems to have the upper hand with four creatures on the board. I need to find some answers to those uh, creatures. And of course, I have to find a way to actually deal damage to Pekka. Haven't been able to. Okay, there's a Taunus' Coffin, so an artifact from Antiquities. I can pay three and tap it to put target creature out of the game into the coffin. 
as long as the coffin's tapped. Oh, this is nice. So this is a combo here, these two cards. I can use my Taunus' coffin to put the Triskelion into the coffin. So then it's exiled. Then when it's my turn, I can untap the coffin and then the Triskelion comes back into play. And then it gets three plus one plus one counters again. So it would go up to six counters. I wonder if I'm going to do it straight away because Peckin is tapped out. So it's kind of giving me an opening to put it into the coffin safely because if Peckin... Peckham disenchants um, the coffin while the trike is in there. The trike actually comes back onto the battlefield. If Peckham disenchants the uh, Taunus' coffin while I'm using it, I'm actually going to lose my, uh, my creature and the coffin because it's on its way to the coffin, but when it gets there, the coffin is no longer there. So I lose my creature and I lose the coffin if he disenchants on time. But now he's tapped out so I could use it. The downside of that strategy though is that I'm then opening myself up to all those creatures. Looks like I'm killing the Juggernaut here. What I probably want to do is I'm hoping that Peckham doesn't have a disenchant because I remember my, my thought process here. I was hoping that Peckham doesn't have a disenchant or that's what I'm hoping for, sorry. And then I want to block one of the attackers of Peckham, then when blockers are declared, but before damage is dealt, I want to put my trike into the coffin. So that means I don't take damage from that attacker. And that's also why I'm choosing to tap down my own Howling Mine. So that's kind of the line of play that I'm going for. Peckham drawing two cards here because of course his own Howling Mine is still active. He's gonna go through his graveyard, perhaps because of that time twister that he's got. Also has a regrowth, of course, in his deck. I believe he's got a City of Brass still that he can use for the green. Gonna use the Relic Barrier here to tap down the Juggernaut and use my Icy to tap down the Suchi. He's gonna attack here. So now I'm gonna block. And then I want to use my Taunus' Coffin here when blockers are declared, but before damage is dealt. Let's see if it's going to work. It looks like Peckham wants to respond here, so I'm afraid it's not going to work. Maybe I should have just taken the four points of damage. Then again, you know, four points of damage against a deck that also plays red. You know, you go to two to ten. That's quite a lot. Anyway, losing both cards here. Bit of a letdown. At least I don't take any damage. There's a regrowth. He's gonna drop to 18. What is he gonna pick up? The time walk, perhaps? Ooh, that would be quite good. A time walk. Oh no! I think he can win it now, because he's got a lot of damage on the board, right? He can hit me for 13, so I would drop to 1. Oh, man. Yeah, it takes the damage from the Vault. Oh, this is really good for Peckham. He can hit me for 13. I'm completely, almost completely tapped out. Only have the one Plateau. Hopefully, I've got like a Swords in hand, but I don't think I do, or else I would have played it out already. Oh, look at that. Dropping to 1. Oh, that's so bad. And there's a Bolt. There is a bolt. So here my opponent really winning on that time walk. That was, that was beautiful. Well done, Peckham. Well done, man. I, I, to be honest, I thought it was kind of in the driver's seat because it was drawing extra cards because of my Howling Mind Relic combination. But yeah, I have to say the double time walk in this match really did it uh, for you. Congratulations, winning the first game. Now we're just going to shuffle up because uh, we don't have our sideboards in this match. It's a best of three without sideboarding. So we're going to shuffle up and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So at least I'm on the play after losing that first one. That time walk was just was brutal, Peckham. Anyway, starting with the plateau, six in hand. Passing the turn. Let's see if Peckham can find another turn one howling mine. That was a fun game one. It was a long game, but it was a fun game. So many cards drawn. Let's hope game two is going to be as entertaining. Beckham starting here with a Mishra's Factory. Does he have any Moxen? Okay, there was a little glitcher, but there we see a Black Lotus. Second the Lotus. Uh-oh. What is he going to do? 
And a Chaos Orb, and oh, the connection's really bad. It's hard to see what that card is. That's a Howling Mine. He's playing a Howling Mine again. Love it, Peckham. Love your style. Turn one Howling Mine twice in a row. He also has that Chaos Orb. Hopefully, I've got a Disenchant for the Chaos Orb. Of course, I can wait until he activates it. There's a Strip Mine. I mean, I could Strip. So playing a Disenchant now on the Chaos Orb. You may be wondering why not wait for him to activate it next turn. I think I just want to be absolutely safe. That I'm able to destroy it. So I'm just destroying it straight, straight away. Getting it out of, the, out of the way there. Does mean Peckham gets to use his mana for something else. Or perhaps just to deal a damage. Or maybe I've got a Swords in hand and I want Peckham here to... Ooh, there's a Strip Mine though on my... Plateau, what I wanted to say is maybe I want Peckham to animate the factory here. So I'm going to draw two cards. Hopefully I can find some lands in there. There's a power plant. Tapping two. There's a relic barrier. Okay, now I get it. So again, in the upkeep, I could tap down the mine. That's exactly what I'm doing, hoping that Peckham cannot find lands. Of course, I still have that one strip mine, so I could strip away one of his lands next turn. And again, I'm keeping a white open, so I think I got a Swords in hand. That's really what I'm, I'm signaling, at least, to Peckham. Yeah, pointing out the Mox Pearl. Do I have it or don't I have it? So is Peckham going to take the risk? That's the question. I think I wouldn't do it. I mean, I'm still on 20. Why would you attack for two? You have this risk of losing your land. Exactly. Yeah, there's the pass. I think it's a good decision. I would have done the same. And now the de decision making is up to me. Like, am I going to use my strip mine on the tundra here of Peckham? Looks like I'm a little bit having land issues myself here, actually. Tapping two. No, tapping it this way. So I'm kind of struggling here with my mana base. That's not a good sign. I wonder if I have another Howling Mine here, for example, to play out. In that case, I would allow Peckham to untap another Relic Barrier. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, again, changing, <laughs> changing my mind. Sorry, Peckham. And playing a Maze of If. And I am going to take care of the Tundra. I think that's a good decision. Also because white gives him access to disenchant. So I'm going to pass the turn, tap down the Howling Mine. going to try to keep Peckham on a low amount of lands. The fact I'm playing my Maze of If for a land for turn kind of shows that I don't have a lot of lands in hand. Probably none. Probably the Maze was my only option. That's why I was, you know, really struggling with deciding whether or not to use the Strip Mine. Here we see a Mana Vault. Ooh, there's a Suchi. I can tap down the Suchi, of course. And I got the May. So, I mean, those Relic Barriers, again, are just really good in this matchup. Finding an Urza's Tower. Tapping two. There is a Howling Mine. Three cards in hand. I wonder what I'm going to do with the Relic Barrier. Passing the turn. Looks like I'm going to keep the Howling Mine tapped. And passing turn here. So Peckham, of course, taking a damage from his own Mana Vault. Dropping to 18. Only drawing one card. So again, I've got my card advantage, advant um, advantage engine going. Sorry, guys. Uh, that should be good. Eventually, that should deliver me the victory. But remember that game one with that time walk out of nowhere. It's always tricky playing against uh, those blue power cards. Attacking here with the Suchi, using my maze to send it back. And Peckham also found a Mox Emerald. I mean, I think that Mana Vault is going to be really going to be a pain for Peckham, also because of my Relic Barriers, of course. I could just... Tap it down the moment he untaps it again. So now I'm taking my turn, untapping everything, drawing two cards for turn. Let's see what I can do. If I can find a mine, I got Tron. That would be really sweet. 
I haven't seen a single trike so far in this match. I am playing with the full four. Tapping two. Another Howling Mine. Wow, that is kind of insane, isn't it? Tapping down both my mines, passing the turn. So this is, again, you know, it's, it's risky, but I'm going for it because now I'm allowing Peckham to draw two cards. So let's see what he can find. But next turn, I get to draw four cards if nothing changes. Let's see if Peckham can find some artifact hate here. Ooh, this is good. Mishra's workshop here. That can really help him to cast some of his bigger artifacts. There's a soul ring. If he's going to attack for four, I'm just going to send it back. But you know, if he has a time walk, he can then attack again and the mace will be tapped. And I think here at this, you know, situation for Peckham with all the mocks and with the workshop, the soul rings, the mana vaults, I think that the trike really fits this deck. He's going to animate the factory here. So let's see if I have a sword to plowshares. He's also going to play out another Suchi. He's going to attack with both. Let's see what I'm going to do. Taking my cards now. It looks like I do have a swords in hand. So playing a swords. Going for the factory here, sending back the Suchi. And maybe this surprises you that I'm going for the factory over the Suchi, but I'm doing that because when I target the factory, he's also going to lose a land. And of course, you know, the factory is harder to get rid of because I have disenchants and swords, but I cannot use them until Peckham actually animates his factory. Whereas the Suchis, you know, I can kind of control them with my relic barriers, with my swords, with my disenchants. I've got so many answers to them. So I'm not really worried about that. Look at that, playing a mine. So now I've got Tron. Tapping four. Am I going to play out an Icy or a Suchi? That's the question here. And remember, I'm drawing so many cards now. Yeah, there's a Suchi. Tapping both my Howling Mines. Five in hand. Probably, yeah, passing the turn here on the end step. Are we going to see a Swords on the Suchi? There's a Swords on the Suchi. So at least I'm going to gain four then. I'm going to lose those life again next turn. But for now, I'm going up. Going up to 24. There's the untap. Again, a damage here for Peck. I'm going to drop to 17. Going to draw two cards from his own Howling Mine. I mean, I'm drawing so many more cards than Peckham that eventually that should, you know, grant me the victory. But it is risky. Remember, Peckham also playing with direct damage, of course. Having two fireballs in the deck, four bolts. Going to take a damage from his own City of Brass. Disenchant here. Ooh, taking care of the Mox Pearl. That makes sense because it's my only colored mana that I have, actually. In response, casting a sword on one of the Suchis. The thing is, I'm not too worried about it because, yes, it's my only colored source, um, but I'm drawing so many cards that I'm sure I can find, you know, my dual lands or my city of brasses, etc. There's a wheel of fortune. That is nice. Oh, look at the balance. Losing the balance here. And this is a good play by Peckham. He gets to refill his hand. Did he play out a land yet? I'm not sure. That's usually the first question after people like play these draw sevens, you know. Did I play a land yet? <laughs> like, I don't know. I think he did actually. Anyway, attacking here, sending it back with my maze of if. And now I'm taking my turn. I mean, I've got seven... Cards in hand. I'm going to draw four more cards, 11 in total. That's insane. And I've got active Tron. This is really the dream for me. 
Let's see what I can do with all these, uh, all the mana and all the cards that I have. The funny thing is that there's happening quite a lot. Look at that, Amishra's Workshop on my side of the table as well. There's happening quite a lot in this match. Uh, but our life totals for both of us are still pretty high. I mean, Peckham's on 19. I'm on 24. Playing out a Triskelion here. So it comes into play with three plus one plus one counters. I've got these lovely robot arms sent to me by the Rhineland Adventures. So starting with three of these arms on there. So it's now a 4-4 and I can shoot these counters away for one damage to any target. Tapping two more mana, playing out another Relic Barrier. That is really good. Those relics are so good. Oh, and a Winter Orb. That is pretty sweet. So now, I've, now I'm doing what my deck wants to do. Makes sense after drawing like a zillion cards that you finally can do what your deck wants to do. <laughs> but um, I got the Winter Orb Relic barrier, barrier and I've got the Howling Mine uh, Relic Barrier going on here. That's what I want to do. So it's nice to, uh, to see this in action. It's very vulnerable, you know. Um, but when it works, it's kind of cool. So I'm now trying to decide what to do. Like, do I, for example, want to keep a Relic Barrier open to tap down the uh, Soul Ring here of Beckham? Exactly, that's what I'm doing. So I'm allowing him to draw an extra card, but my reasoning here is um, that by tapping down his Soul Ring, he's going to have some mana issues himself. I mean, I wonder if that's true, because he still has the Workshop... He's got the mana to cast artifacts. If you want to cast something else, it's going to be a little bit tougher, but I think with his deck, it's not going to be a big problem. And Atok is only one red and one. So I'm not sure if this is the right strategy. I think it would have been better just to tap down my own Howling Mine here and not giving him that extra card. Let's see what Peckham can do here. So he's drawn three cards now. He can attack, but I've got the maze and I've got the trike, but probably going to maze if he attacks. So that's not great for him. He's played the plateau. What he needs is just some answers, right? I mean... This enchant could work. I don't think he plays with any land destruction. Well, he's got the strip mines in his deck, of course. That's, that's good enough. If he can find a strip, he could strip the maze. Thinking about attacking or not attacking. He is attacking here with the 4-4. I wonder what I'm going to do. Yeah, send it back. That makes sense. What else can he do? Tapping four. Are we going to see a Juggernaut or a Suchi? Another Suchi hitting the board. Going to go through his graveyard. Does he have another regrowth? Also asking about what I have in my graveyard. Which is good, you know, it's always good to kind of keep track like how many disenchants and swords have you played out so far. So it can be quite influential as well. So here I'm tapping my Winter Orb on his end step so that I get to untap all my lands. I get to draw four cards again. I think first point of business here is to find like a plateau. Exactly, there's the plateau because I need to find some colored lands. There's a Mox Ruby. I mean, I should be able to win this, right? I'm drawing so many more cards. The problem now is, how am I actually going to win this? Peckham also being quite high still on his life total. He's on 19. Am I going to destroy maybe, because I'm tapping the plateau, I thought maybe I'm going to do another Swords on one of his Suchis. Looks like I'm really into tank here because I've got so many cards.
Tapping five, six here. There is a Suchi and an Atok. Okay, I think that Atok could be really good here. If I can kind of pave the way for my Atok, that would be super. I mean, I can potentially deal so much damage. And with the relics, of course, I can use my relics to tap down his Suchis and I can start attacking. Seven in hand passing the turn. I think what's important here is that I'm patient, which I am when I'm looking at the way I'm playing, but that's important not to haste it, not to rush. I mean, the board state is looking really good for me. There we see an end step move by Peckham. There's a bolt on the ATOC. Then the question is, am I going to save it? I mean, it makes sense to save it, right? Yeah. So sacking a ruby, so making my ATOC a 3-4. Is he going to play another bolt? Playing another bolt. This is a tougher decision because do I want to sack like a relic or a winter orb? I don't think I want to sack that. Although winter orb is not so good on this board because of all the moxen and the soul ring on the side of Peckham. Yeah, look at that. So I'm going to allow it to be destroyed here. At least it's a two for one. It's not too bad. And of course, Peckham had to tap two lands. So he's a little bit... Um, yeah, exactly. He was untapping all the lands. He can, of course, only untap one land. But I think it's not a huge problem here. Looks like I'm choosing to tap down the soul ring as well. That means I cannot tap down my own Winter Orb anymore, but maybe it doesn't matter. So let's have a look. I mean, he still has... Now, although now he's really low on mana, I have to say. Okay, he's finding a Volcanic Island, so he still has four. There's a Regrove. Okay, what is he going to get back? Get back a Disenchant. Ooh, what is he going to disenchant so many targets? I think the Winter Orb. Maybe that's like the most annoying thing for him. But I mean, you can, the Relic Barriers are good. My creatures are good. There are just so many targets here. So Peckham really in the tank here. Like, what am I going to do with my disenchant? I think I would just keep it for now. Maybe just attack with my Suchi, see how I am going to respond. Look, look like I wanted to tap something, but changing my mind. Or not. Tapping three. Do I have a disenchant as well to cast, perhaps? Yeah, playing a disenchant here. Probably going to take care of one of the Suchis. Because, I mean, I want to start dealing some damage at a certain point. So now I'm confronted with my own Winter Orb. So I have to make a tough decision here. Deciding to untap the Workshop. Does that mean that I have another Triskelion in hand, maybe, that I want to play out? I mean, if I have a Plateau in hand and a Trike, that would be ideal, right? Exactly. Playing the Plateau, so I've got access to my my swords and all that stuff. Tapping three more. Soul ring, so two and two. Perhaps another Suchi. Icy manipulator, that's pretty good. So I've got seven in hand still. It's just insane the amount of cards I'm drawing. I could tap, exactly, tap down the Suchi, hit Peckham for eight. So finally I'm able to deal some damage here. Does he have a response? So he, of course, still has that disenchant. Could disenchant probably the Suchi. Because if he disenchants a trike, he still takes damage. So I'm kind of rearranging my, my board here. Let's see what Peckham is going to do. Is he going to take the full eight? It looks like he is going to drop to nine.
And now it's up to me to decide what am I going to do with my relic barriers. I mean, I could decide to go full on his Mox and then his Soul Ring, for example, but that is a risk because then I'm allowing Peckham to draw four cards. And it's just, it's tough, you know. He is playing a Disenchant here. Disenchanting my Winter Orb. Yeah, in that case, I think I really should tap. Now in the upkeep, I should really tap down my Howling Mines and actually the Howling Mine of Peckham as well. So he's untapping everything now because the Winter Orb is gone. Well, he's not untapping the Mana Vault, of course. Taking a damage from that is going to draw cards. I think I should do something here. Yeah, and I think I'm saying uh, to Peckham now because he went a little bit fast. I wanted to do something in his upkeep still. Yes, he's putting some cards back. I'm saying in your upkeep, this is what I want to do. It was a very friendly match, by the way, so don't worry. It was just We were talking about other stuff as well, as always. Um, it's very important with this deck, with the Orbitron deck, to be very focused during the upkeep. Like, upkeep really matters with this deck, which I like, you know. I enjoy it when every uh, um, part of, of a turn matters. Every phase of a turn, that's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, let's see what Peckham can do. So he, he still drew two, though, because he still had, of course, his own Howling Minder untapped. And he's now on eight, which means he's really into, into Fireball range. Remember, I'm playing with one Fireball and one Disintegrate, which is a great way to finish the game. He's on seven there, tapping his City of Brass. What is he going to do? Going to play a Demonic Tutor, so one floating still. Counting the amount of mana. Okay, that's kind of, uh, that's making me nervous. I'm still on 24, though. Wonder what he's going to do. Could get a time walk, for example. That would be quite good. But it, would sa it wouldn't save him. So he's shuffling up again. We're just going to have to wait and see what he's going to do. So remember, he still has one mana floating. Counting his lands. It's never a good sign when your opponent starts counting the lands. Remember, I'm one game down. I need to win this for game number three. Okay, there's a Jam Day Tome, which is really good. Remember, he still had that one mana floating, right? So that's why he only has to tap the workshop. So attacking here, I'm using my maze, but I'm a little bit concerned about a potential time walk. Are we going to see a time walk? No, an ATOC. Okay, I really thought I was going to see a time walk there. It can still happen, of course. Oh, the time walk. Oh, no, this is so bad. At least I still have my Icy Manipulator untapped so I can tap down the ATOC, but oh, man. You can really see in this game how good blue power is. I mean, we all know it's insane. I play with it a lot. Uh, but yeah, Time Walk and Accessual Recall, they're just insane. And sometimes, mind, uh, sorry, Time Twister as well. Anyway, he's doing more. Going to play a Disenchant. Oh no, on the Icy? Oh, that's really bad. Probably on the Icy Manipulator. I don't think he's got enough though to kill me next turn, but this is going to be very rough for me. I'm going to do something in response at least. Probably have a Swords in hand to Swords the Atok. So it looks like I'm going to Swords the Atok. And then I wonder if Peckham's going to sack any artifacts to make it bigger. Oh, man. I, was, I kind of felt like he picked that time walk with the Demonic Tutor. So he's sacking the Vault, of course, to the Atok. That makes sense. He's going to gain three life, which is, which is important for him because he's quite low. So he's going to go back up to 9. And he's still looking around thinking, do I want to sack something else as well? Because he is quite low. So 
So it is going to go up to nine. I'm thinking about, does it make sense to tap anything down on the side of Peckham? But I conclude it doesn't. I mean, all the City of Brasses are tapped already, for example, because that would be a target to tap, because then it at least takes a damage. So I have my one Urza's Tower untapped. Peckham taking an extra turn. Let's see what he's going to do. Going through his mana. He's got a lot of options, probably. Okay, drawing a card. That's not that bad. It shows that his options are not that great. Let's see, tapping three. There's a time twister. Oh, man. Oh. So shuffling everything back in, except, of course, the exiled cards. And then we're going to draw a fresh seven. And I mean, Peckham still's got quite a lot of mana open. He's probably going to attack me for four. He's going to put me on 20. Let's first draw our seven cards. Time walk has been so good in this matchup. So there's a fresh seven for Peckham. There's a Mox Pearl. What else can he do? There's the attack for four. It's going to put me on 20. Let's hope he's now just going to pass the turn. I guess not. He's going to do something else. Going to drop another life. Going to go to eight. There's a bolt on my life total, putting me on 17. I wonder if he maybe has another bolt here. Okay, so perhaps he's got a Wheel of Fortune in hand. Tapping two more. There's a time walk again. Oh, oh, oh no. So we found the time walk again with the time twister. Are you kidding me? Oh my lord. This is so bad. I was feeling really comfortable on 24, but then all the shenanigans started and now I'm really concerned. And let's see what he's going to do now with his extra turn. So this is turn number three, right? Draw another card. Attack for four. Going to put me on 10. I'm on 10 all of a sudden. Remember, I started when I passed the turn. I was on 24. And now we're three turns later, all for Peckham, and I'm on 10. I'm really worried. When he started like playing the bolts, I kind of knew, okay, he's going to play some kind of draw seven, but then he was finding the time walk back again. I mean, I wasn't expecting that. There's another Suchi hitting the board. Hopefully it just stays with this and I'm still on 10. And you know, if I just have picked up a burn spell, like one of my disintegrates or fireballs, I can still win this. Tapping two more. There's a disenchant taking care of the trike, it seems. So I'm going to shoot him for three, going to put him on four. I mean, I'm so, I mean, he's on four. I'm super close. There is a swords. Okay, that kind of helps. I'm going to go back up to 14. I actually don't mind this swords too much because it was feeling more vulnerable at 10. And of course, I don't know if Peckham has more swords in hand, but I would have considered keeping the swords for himself because it can be a great life gain spell. But now, of course, I'm still going to draw, like I've got two Howling Mines, a Howling Mine on the side of Peckham, so I'm going to draw four cards. I kind of feel like I need to win the game this turn or else I'm going to be toast next one. That's kind of a feeling I have. So Peckham's on four, so it should be doable. Unfortunately for me, a trike is not going to be enough, though. There is a Mox Pearl. 
And I guess the Swords was a good move, by the way, by Peckham, because I could have tapped down his Suchi, attacked him with the other Suchi and killed him. Okay, there's a trike. The problem here is Peckham's on four. I guess I haven't found my burn yet, or else I would have played it out. Okay, there's a kiss, Matt. Okay, there's a winter orb. That's kind of good. There's another winter orb. So really going to play it safe here. Want to make sure that he doesn't have a lot of mana next turn. The problem, of course, is he does have the Moxen. And I believe a soul ring, so he's pretty good in the mana department. Now remember, because of the Kismet, the lands, artifacts, and creatures he plays come into play tapped. But it looks like I'm going to give Peckham another turn, which is risky. So he's going to take his turn. Unfortunately, the connection wasn't great. Now it's getting a little bit better at least. But look at all that artifact mana. I mean, that's pretty good. So I'm asking about his mana situation in the upkeep, trying to make a decision what to do. I mean, I have three relic barriers, which is a lot. I think what I should do in this case, again, it really depends on my hand, but I would probably... Oh, this is tough though. I mean, I could decide to tap down all the Howling Mines. But it would also mean that I cannot untap what I have next turn. Then again, do I, do I need all that mana? I think I should just tap down the Mines. Tapping down my own Howling Mines. Am I also going to tap down the one of Peckham? Nah, yeah, I'm also going to tap down the one of Peckham. So I'm just going to allow him to draw one card. So that's kind of my strategy here. And then he's probably going to attack me with both Suchis, right? I can use a maze on one. Then I wonder if I'm going to block it. If I'm going to block the other one. Perhaps I have a disenchant in hand. Who knows? Anyway, Peckham drawing a card. Pointing out that his land comes into play tapped because of the Kismet. Which makes a difference, of course. And here we can see that synergy, by the way, between Kissman and Winter Orb. I mean, Peckham can still untap his, uh, his book as well. Because I tapped down his Howling Mine, not his book exactly. And he can use the book with the, uh, the Moxen and the Soaring if he wants to. I mean, that's always tough with like, it's nice to have Winter Orb, but when your opponent plays with all the Moxen, it's just not that good anymore. Looks like he's going to tap a white. There's a Swords. And I think I'm going to put, yeah, going to put Peckham on one here. Going to take a life. Going to go up to 15. That card is removed, though. I mean, it could be relevant. Peckham plays another uh, Time Twister. So I'm now on 15. He can now attack me. See what he can do. There's a... No, he's not playing a Swords. I thought I saw another Swords there. I mean, if he has another Swords in hand, I would just keep it. You can use it in response to a burn or anything, you know, to gain some life for yourself. Anyway, attacking with both Suchi. He's going to send back a Suchi. going to take four, drop to 11. Man, this is a tense game. <laughs> Beckham's on one, but he's still on one. If I can find an Icy Manipulator, actually, that can grant me the victory because I can tap down a City of Brass. I have a lot of cards that can give me the win. The thing is, I need to draw them. You know, that is the thing. And now, okay, I'm untapping the tower. So I think I got another trike in hand. Looking at untapping the Urza's Tower over the uh, Maze of If. That kind of signals to me that I have a Triskelion in hand. So Trike can give me the win. Fireball can give me the win. Disintegrate can give me the win. Although, wait a minute. Peckham, of course, has that Swords. So it's not entirely true what I'm saying. 
because he can then just use his swords. Oh man, I wonder what's gonna happen playing Aloha to draw another card. Oh my goodness, eight cards in hand. Tapping two, there's a disenchant on the book. I mean, disenchanting the book basically means that I'm not gonna win it this turn. There's a coffin. Man, this is not good. Okay, there's a balance. Okay, then it kind of makes sense. Playing out the balance. Four cards in hand. Beckham then probably gonna play out the swords. Exactly, gonna gain some life. Gonna go back up to five. Oh man, I think this game two is gonna last forever. This is crazy stuff. And next turn, I'm going to take four points of damage. I mean, I'm on 15, though, so it's not too bad. No, I'm on 11. We dropped to seven, which is not great, actually. Oh, wait, Peckham, of course, losing the Suchi because of the balance. Yeah, I'm kind of distracted here. So we're kind of talking about the balance, of course, resolving still. So I'm losing a land here. We both have... Oh no, I gotta discard some cards as well. I've had four in hand, so I gotta discard Kismet and uh, City. Two cards in hand. Now for me, two cards for Peckham. I'm probably just gonna tap everything down, right? I think it makes sense to also tap down the Howling Mine here exactly of Peckham. So he only gets to draw one card. But he's still alive. It's, it's, it's crazy. I've drawn so many more cards on him, pointing out the Kismet again. Yeah, Kismet Winter Orb is, is, is really tough. But I mean, Peckham, like I said before, he's got a lot of Moxen and he's got the Soul Ring. That's really helping him here. And it looks like there was a pass here by Peckham, so I'm trying to decide what I want to untap. Looks like I'm untapping the Urza's Tower. I mean, I'm going to draw so many cards. I should find... A burn spell. Let's see what I can do. Tapping two. Playing an Atok. Okay, I mean, an Atok can grant me the victory. But that does mean I have to pass a turn again and give another turn here to, uh, to Peckham. Man, this is taking a long time. Tapping again the Howling Mines, probably also the Howling Mine on the side of Peckham during his upkeep. So untap, upkeep, and then I'm, I'm tapping the Howling Mine down. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I'm on 11. Peckham's on 5. I got the Atok. There's a Volcanic Island. Comes into play tap because of the Kismet. Two cards in hand by Peckham. I think tapping down the mines is, is really crucial here because Peckham is just not going to find the answers that he needs. And remember, if he animates the factory next turn to block the Atok, I can tap it down with the Relic Barrier and then deal the crucial points of damage. There's the pass. So am I now finally gonna, gonna win the game after drawing like a million more cards than my opponent? Let's take a look. So I'm untapping my artifacts, untapping a land, choosing to go for the plateau. Drawing again four cards. So six cards in hand. Tapping six, have I found another trike? Okay, there's another trike. And here the Atok comes for the win, probably. Let's see. Beckham's gonna animate. In response, I'm gonna shoot it twice. Then it's gonna tap itself, right? To make it a 3-3. Three, three. 
And then, I mean, it doesn't even matter because it cannot block when it's tapped. But anyway, I decide to kill it. And then, of course, I can feed everything to my Atox. I'm feeding the Suchi, feeding the ring. Should probably feed some more stuff. Anyway, look at that. Trying to see where my burn spell was. Winning, finally, game number two. I don't know if you guys are still here, but I've won game number two. It is 1-1. One, one. We're going to shuffle up. And we're going to find out who's going to win this matchup. Peckham or myself. We'll find out in the next game. Game number three. Here we go. This is the decider. Oh, man. These are some long games. But I can tell you they were super cool to play. It was really nice. Uh, it was a really nice battle, Peckham. And we're not there yet. This is game three. Let's see what's going to happen. Peckham on the play here. So I guess that makes him a slight favorite. Look at that opener here. Two Moxon. Mox Pearl and Mox Ruby. And there's a Soul Ring. Wow. Do you also have a land? Okay, there's a land at Tundra. So he's got four mana. Tapping the four. There's a Suchi. So turn one Suchi and lots of ramp. Does mean he only has two more cards in hand though, I believe. So that's the good news for me. If I can now simply find a Disenchant or a Swords on the Suchi. Of course, I, of course I can wait with that. So we're probably going to pass here. No, it looks like I'm going to do it main again. Oh, play a relic instead. Okay, it does the same thing though. And then again, I have this interesting decision to make. Am I going to take four damage or am I going to tap down, for example, his soul ring? Because remember, four mana is kind of a key thing for Peckham. You know, he can play out his other creatures. So yeah, I'm deciding to tap down the Soul Ring here, hoping that Peckham cannot find the land and cannot play out more threats. I mean, it does mean I'm taking four points of damage, which is a hefty price to pay. So I wonder if this is the right decision. So finding a City of Brass here. And he's going to swing in here for four. So going to put me on 16. And passing the turn. So let's see what I'm going to do. There's a power plant. So I've got a power plant and a mine. If I can find a tower next turn, I've got natural Tron turn three. That would be the dream. That would be super cool for me. Probably going to keep the relic now to... Uh... Ooh, there's a disenchant though on the relic barrier probably. In response, I'm going to disenchant the Suchi. Okay. And pass the turn. So I wanted to use a Relic Barrier again on the Soul Ring, and now this time because I had the Disenchant in hand. There is an Atok. Hard to see, but it's an Atok there, and no cards in hand anymore for Peckham, but this Atok is dangerous. Okay, there is. This is really good. So now I've got Natural Tron with Urza's Tower tapping 7. There is a Trike. I can use the Trike now. To deal two points of damage to the Atok. Kind of forcing him to sack one of his artifacts. I wonder if I want to though. Three cards in hand for me only. No Howling Mines in this game by the way. This is the first time. Okay, I'm shooting out two Trike Arms. Two points of damage to the Atok. Let's see what Peckham's going to do in, in response. I'm expecting him to sack an artifact. Looks like it's going to be the Mox Ruby. Second the Mox Ruby. Making it a 3-4 so it's not going to die. And now I'm passing the turn here to Peckham. So Peckham's got one card in hand. Tapping, th ooh, four. Okay, there's a Suchi. I mean, it's looking pretty okay-ish here for Peckham. Passing the turn. I kind of expected him to attack. But I guess he wants to keep his artifacts for now. Wants to keep the pearl. Playing out a City of Brass. Tapping seven. Another Suchi. That is pretty good. Am I now again going to try to kill the Atog? Yeah, two points to the Atog. Is he going to sack an artifact here? Looks like he's going to sack the Pearl to keep it alive. So it's now a 3-4 with two damage on it. So I could decide to use my other two counters there on both trikes to try to kill the Atog, forcing him to... or. Get rid of the Atok or sack his Soul Ring. Sack in the Soul Ring here. 
So this is interesting because remember, Peckham's also pretty low on cards himself. Playing an Atok here for myself as well. Still had one mana floating from the trike. And now I can feed my empty Triskelions, of course, to my Atok. Passing the turn. I wonder if Peckham's going to attack with the Suchi. If he does, I'm probably going to sack both trikes to my Atog. There's a Mox Sapphire. Okay, that's not too bad. And he's going to attack here just with the Suchi. Could have considered attacking with both, because then if I would uh, block the, the Suchi and sack the trikes, he could sack the Suchi to his own Atok. Anyway, it wouldn't have mattered much because I probably would have first declared blocks and before damage would have done the sacking. So, sacking both trikes here, making it into a 5-6. Uh, a Killing the Suchi. Let's see what else I can do. Okay, there is a Chaos Orb. Am I going to flip here on the Atok? There's the flip, hitting the Atok here. So the Atok is a gunner and then attacking for one, probably. Gonna attack for one. Only one card in hand still. Passing the turn to Peckham. So Peckham on 19 now. I'm on 16. There's the pass. Untapping, you're going to go to two cards in hand, attacking him again. Going to put him on 18, it seems. And playing a plateau. Passing the turn. So both of us are kind of in top decking mode, trying to find something useful. Tapping four. Okay, there we see a Suchi. There's an attack again. Going to put him on 17. Maybe Peckham has some removal in hand, and that's why he needs some time thinking, do I want to use my removal on the Atok? But now, of course, there's an added threat on the table. Yep, there's a Swords on the Suchi. And it's a good thing he does this on end step, because if he would have done it during combat, I could have... Like sacrifice to Suchi to the Atok. And then it would just take two points of extra damage. So this is a, it's a correct line of play by Peckham. Plays out another land and passes the turn. Attacking here again. So it's interesting to see this game three being so completely different uh, from our other two previous games. Just because we don't have those Howling Mines. Playing out a Kismet here after putting Peckham on 16. So in my second main and passing the turn. Can Peckham find something useful here from the top of his deck? That's a big question. Two cards in hand now, it seems. Playing a Mishra's Workshop that comes into play tap because of the Kismet. He seems to be a little bit in the tank here, trying to decide what he wants to do with his last card. Perhaps it's a Disenchant. Oh, it's a Chaos Orb instead. So he's going to play the Chaos Orb, but it comes into play tap, though, because of the Kismet. Do I now have, for example, a disenchant to get rid of the Chaos Orb on the side of Peckham? It looks like I'm going to sack the Pearl here to the Atok to deal two points of extra damage. Doing this because I'm expecting him to flip with the Chaos Orb next turn on the Atok. He's going to draw for turn. Are we going to see a flip here from Peckham? I would do it main, you know, the reason for that is that you don't want to give me another turn to potentially draw into a disenchant. He is giving me that turn though. So maybe he wants to keep his Chaos Orb for something else, which makes sense as well. It's only dealing one point of damage. No, he doesn't. He is going to animate, sorry, activate the Chaos Orb. He's going to flip. That's a hit. Quick flip, quick hit. Atok is gone. And uh, yeah, both of us are just kind of trying to, uh, to find some threats here to put on the table. We're both playing with white, of course. We both have disenchants and swords, meaning you have a lot of answers to the threats. 
So if we both have answers in our hands and no threats, it's going to be a long game. Or maybe just lands though, passing the turn. So I actually have a lot of mana because I have a Tron, right? So I've got 2, 4, 6, 9, 11, 12 mana there. There is, oh, what am I going to do? Or is it going to be a burn spell? Am I going to win this out of nowhere? Game number three. There is the Disintegrate, and that is a win for me. I think there's not much that Peckham can do. There are no creatures on the board, for example. Yeah, you got Disenchant Double Bolt. Winning it here with the Disintegrate, and this is actually how my deck usually operates when I've already dealt some damage, in this case with the Atok. Um, you know, I'm able to deal those final 10 points of damage with a big Disintegrate or Fireball. So winning it here, and a wow, Pekka, man. Thank you for this match. It was a lot of fun. It was really nice to meet you, to talk about magic. And I think you've got a great collection. And uh, it was a long, but a fun match. I also would like to thank you for watching. Before you go, if you're not subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Oh man, and if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Please consider leaving a like, leaving a comment, and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And if you enjoy um, what I do, if you enjoy me as a content creator, please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash timmytalks. There you can find out how you can support the channel. And if you uh, become a patron, you can also play against me so we can make an episode together just like I did here with Beckham. If you want to do that, check out patreon.com slash timmytalks to read about all the ins and outs. For now, we're going to go to the end scroll and take a look at my amazing, wonderful, uh, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Let's have a look. Zeke!